I I don't think it's ever going to get old sitting and watching Wildebeest in these numbers. So we're watching at the moment by the grace of the Fleur, uh, or as we've been mispronouncing it to the Fleur, but it's the Fleur, and that of course is providing the thermal imaging. And what you're looking at in the mo at the moment is a good couple of hundred Wildebeest, not quite fully thousands yet, but there are certainly a lot of them. Now imagine that, picture that. And then imagine that in the pitch black and trying to figure out where a lion is in the middle of a herd like that while it's running. And then you get a rough idea of some of the complications that we face. Oh, I've made complications for somebody else, which means that we've got to switch back onto our normal camera so that I can move away. Here we go. Sorry, mister. I didn't mean to park in the middle of the road. Yes, I did. Once this car has passed us, I want to just sit so that you can hear the sound effects of the wildebeest while they're all gathered together. Morning. Sorry. Sorry to have blocked you for two seconds. Let me just shift around back into the middle of the road because is there a car coming? No. <clears throat> and you can listen to the sound of the wildebeest. And this goes on. 24 hours a day. I think I've spotted where the lions are, judging by a whole number of vehicles. Just listen to this. <laughs> now, Stanley, 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 Stanley times three. You're wondering if we could get some x-ray cameras too. I'd be all in favor of that. I think the anatomy of watching the animals move would be amazing. Can you just imagine? What do you think, VM? X-ray cameras. I know what the ate. <laughs> you know what the leopards ate, yeah. Especially if they swallow something whole. I have to find a leopard first, though. I want to go show you the elephants in thermal as well. Perhaps some of you haven't had the opportunity to see what they look like, and it's a great way of demonstrating what their ears look like. Forest wanderers, this is nothing. Okay, this is a lot of wildebeest, but it's nothing compared to what we drove through a little bit earlier. Do you mind if I come past? Do, do you go first? Off you go. Little one. There you go. Okay, you hold on a second. Thank you. The funniest thing to listen to is the changing sound effects of the wildebeest when they go from contact calling, which is their gnuing, to when a male starts to chase a female. It's hilarious. It goes from meh to meh. That goes on for ages. It's very entertaining. There you go, just coming up to the ellies. I tell you what, let's have a competition. See so you can come up with the be best GNU-based pun. Something along the lines of good GNUs, the wildebeest are here, or something similar. See if you can beat me. That's a pathetic one. That's definitely been used before. But hashtag Safari Live on Twitter if you can think of a good GNU-based pun. I think that's what we need for our morning. So there we go. If we have a look at the eddies, if we have a look at them in thermal, just look at this. It is incredible. Have a look at the way that the ears act as a cooling system. I haven't made your life very easy at all, have I, Viam? I'm so sorry. Let me go. Let me reposition so that we don't have the white lights in shot and then we can have a look at those ears and while we do james you were wondering about how you age an elephant it's not a it's i mean the the answer i'm going to give you is not an exact science but there are ways of aging an elephant first of all when they're little they grow at a relatively standard rate so they, they, you can sort of, by about three years old, the tusks will start to poke through and you get a good idea of just how old they are. Um, after that, each elephant grows at an individual rate. You can't, basically, you can't gauge by the length of their tusks. If you, the best way would be to examine their teeth, actually. And then you can start to see an older elephant by the indentations on their forehead. Their skin basically loses a bit of elasticity and their bones become more prominent around their temples. There you go, look at this, isn't that amazing? Look at the ears. You can really see how they function in terms of distributing the heat. So the rest of the elephant's body is obviously very hot. And forgive me, I'm not being patronizing, but that's the bit that's red and yellow. That's the hot part. 
and then the ears where all of those blood vessels are so close to the surface that is where all of an elephant's cooling happens or a great deal of an elephant's cooling it's been one of my favorite things to watch and occasionally on the really dark nights when we're out all night that's actually the thermal image is the only way of seeing the elephants and I've sat surrounded by them feeding right next to the vehicle just watching this thermal image an animal that is adapted to deal with huge amounts of heat so there we go talking about aging of elephants um, between the ear and the and the forehead essentially is the temporal region just above the, where that gland sits behind the eye and you can start to see in older elephants that gets very very sunken so that's the spot that I was chatting about and of course elephants teeth are wear down throughout their lives Ah, it seems as though it is an elephant-filled morning. I'm going to go and search for more wildebeest and some lions to fill it with. But Taylor has got more ellies on the sunrise. On the sunrise? That's not a bird.